Have you gotten an email saying you're a big pervert and your screenshots will be sent to your friends and colleagues if you don't pay up? I just got two of these sextortion scam emails. How can you tell that it's a scam and not worry? Coming up next. So here are some snippets of the emails I got. Maybe the one you got is the same one. Many people have asked me about these types of emails for months and many of you get seriously worried and perhaps you think I'm risking your privacy by being quickly dismissive and saying it's a scam. Especially since often I don't even look at the email. First of all, I run a pretty tight ship. So this kind of nonsense is laughable to me. But I want you to understand that this kind of scam can be extended into an actual hack if you're not careful. So first, let's look for clues that tell us that it is a scam. And second, let's figure out how someone can take this to the next level into an actual active hack. And that's the part you got to be scared of. By the way, I checked the Bitcoin address shown on this email. And at least for the moment, I don't see any payments. So this batch of emails may not yet have resulted in any scam people. Well, the scammer did give you 48 hours and it's not 48 hours yet. The first thing I look for is to see if the scammer made a mistake. So I always scan the email header to see if their IP address has been revealed in the email. Of course, these are professionals. What they do is attack Linux email servers running Postfix. These servers are often misconfigured. So the approach is to send random usernames on the email server to see if the server will accept it for sending. So the domain names don't matter. It's not going to be the real site. These professional scammers will not make a mistake here. There will be no IP to trace. The one I got claimed that they got screenshots of my computer by hacking my router. And it's from a specific zero day called CVE 2019-1663. Well, this threat is for Cisco routers and more specifically, Cisco VPN routers, which I don't have. That is often used for corporate systems, not home users. So that alone should tell you it's a scam. If you don't have a Cisco, then obviously you don't have an issue. If they want to convince you more that it's not a scam, instead of mass mailing, one of the biggest indicators is that they don't put your name on it. That's very scammy. If the scam said, I have your name and address, which is this. Mine said it had a password, but the password was blank. And even if it did have a password, remember that there are ways to get your password and email. There are mass leaks of email addresses and matching password. It's commonly available. Your clue is that it's going to be an old password. You can easily detect it that it's quite fake just from the fact that it's old. If you haven't changed your passwords in a long time, then you may have a different problem and many of your accounts could already be compromised and not just because of this mailing here. If there's personal data in the email, not something from the internet, then you're dealing with a more active threat than this kind of stupid phishing attack that has nothing believable in it. This one claims you have some compromising screenshots. Okay, actually, even if there were no compromising screenshots of porn, even a screenshot of you typing a memo or looking at your social media site is scary enough. Why? Because a remote access Trojan would have full control of your computer. So that would give me a lot of concern. If such a thing actually happened, the first thing I do is erase everything on my computer and start from scratch. So, the fact that no actual evidence of screenshots are shown means that they're trying to get at people who feel guilty. In my case, the scam was even more evident when I get multiple copies of the same email in different email addresses. Obviously, they did not have time to personalize it, 
so the scammer could not have had time to capture all my personal screenshots, all my hard drive space, and personal activity. So, Zuck you, scammer. Here's my actual worry with these emails. Depending on what your email client is, you could be revealing to the hacker that you opened the email through the use of something called beacons. Beacons are commonly used by advertisers to see if you clicked on an email. It's one of the reasons I hate email. This will reveal an IP address, location, and a sign of activity, which can be used to send a follow-up message. The information gathered about you can then be used to dox you so that the next message can be more personal and may convince you that you actually have a Trojan on your computer. This is called spear phishing. This will make the scam more successful. I checked this particular email and it did not have any beacons. But just so you know, a beacon would reveal that the email was opened several times which would indicate that you're afraid because you keep opening the email. Every time you open it, it sends them a little beacon. So that's kind of scary. Now, what is a beacon? A beacon is a hidden HTML code opening a resource on a web server like an image. Images are allowed in emails. But the beacon is not a real image. It's just code to make it look like one. You are, in effect, visiting a foreign website without your knowledge. Your emails do this every day from popular companies selling you things. When you click on the email or open it or it opens in the background, the big companies are just using to see if you're actually receiving it and viewing it. This triggers them to send you more emails. So, if you're not running a VPN, which is a very important defense against this, it will steal your IP address and even your exact location. It can also capture a browser or canvas fingerprint, which will identify you later on. How do you stop a beacon attack? You must have an email client that does not pre-open an email. Unfortunately, I found that most of the common email clients like Mac Mail, Microsoft Mail, Microsoft Outlook, your mobile email clients, and so on, will pre-open the email. So here are the safety precautions. Number one, always have a VPN and have it always running because background tasks like email can leak your IP address. It always worries me what happens in the background. Number two, always set all of your browsers to have location disabled. Number three, always set all your browsers to have autofill turned off. Number four, use Thunderbird as your email client. Mozilla Thunderbird is the one of the few email clients I've found that is not vulnerable to beacons. It also has a view source option, which allows you to quickly read the headers to see IP addresses. Number five, it is very easy to make a mistake and forget that your VPN is not enabled on your mobile devices. This is why I don't install email on my mobile devices. If I need to read an email, I go use the browser on my mobile device and log in using a webmail app rather than an app. But an alternate solution to think about is to use a hardware VPN router. This way the VPN is handled at the router side. Watch my video Privacy Gadgets for information on it. I will link the Mozilla Thunderbird and the videos that you need to watch in the description. There's also a video on browser threat testing, which is related to this. Remember, if you ignore these parts of the instructions, your emails will be open in the background and the attacker will get your identity. As always, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell.